Wow, all right, here we go. Uh, welcome everyone to my Patreon page. Uh, I'm so excited to have you all here. Uh, you know, I wanted to start this for a number of reasons. Uh, one of those being building a community of uh, like-minded sex positive individuals. And so hopefully through this platform, not only can I present a ton of information, uh, you know, as a certified sex therapist, but I can also learn from all of you who have a ton of experiences around intimacy and your own human sexuality. So I'm excited uh, that we have this place where we can all meet up and share ideas together. You know, I had this idea of recording uh, some of these posts that I write, uh, mostly because I know a lot of us don't have time to sit down and read an article. We are constantly on the go. Uh, it's one of the reasons uh, why, you know, I, I used to do a podcast back in the day. Uh, feel free to look it up. It was called Sex Here and Now. I think there's about 15 episodes maybe uh, but I did that because I wanted to get out this information as much as I could our world is wildly sex negative and it puts us in these positions of feeling a crap ton of shame that uh, quite frankly we shouldn't <laughs> so as I said I wanted to provide an audio version of some of these posts again for individuals who prefer to listen uh, to their content instead of sit down and read it. So with that being said, I am again pumped that all of you are here, uh, the few of you right now, and hopefully we can grow this to a larger community. So let's get started. Uh, this post is called Analyzing the Shame Around Anal, or if you're reading it, it's sort of analyzing the shame around anal. <laughs> Dear patrons, as a cis gay male, I think a lot about anal sex. Not because it is always on my mind and I am constantly craving for someone to play with my butt, although I am a fan of butt stuff. More so because as a queer sex therapist, this comes up frequently in session. Clients are either extremely open in talking about the topic or have absolutely zero desire to explore it. I usually can tell when people are more open to talking about or exploring anal due to one reason in particular. It has nothing to do with their gender, sexual orientation, past sexual experiences, religion, or sex education. The one distinguishing feature that separates those who are open to talking about anal play compared to those who aren't, is how free they feel in their sexual identity. So at this post, I hope to provide some wisdom for you patrons so that you too can be a little bit more open to talking about and exploring anal play. All right, so let's get some fast facts out of the way to help clear up any misconceptions around anal sex. One. Although not as many as the clitoris, the anus has a huge concentration of nerve endings. This is one of the reasons why people enjoy anal play. Two, for the love of God, use lube. Unlike the vagina, the anus and rectum are not self-lubricating. Trying to put something in there that does not have any lubrication will be painful, to say the least. Three. Anal pH balance is usually pretty neutral, so most lubricants are safe to use. However, if you are feeling any burning or stinging in the anal region, we may want to use a different lube. Silicone and plant oil-based lubricants are extremely popular for anal play. Four, speaking of pain, if you are experiencing severe pain upon insertion, abort the mission. Uncomfortableness is common, but severe stabbing pain is a no-go. A lot of what happens in the rectum will heal itself, but we want to set it up for success. Five, worried about blood? Don't be, this can be common. 
especially the first time inserting something bigger than a finger. Six, speaking of fingers, use them. Unlike the vagina, the rectum does not naturally welcome an object. It needs to be told that it is okay and safe. How do we do this? Breathing plus lube plus starting slow equals pleasure and success. Seven, you do not need to have a prostate to enjoy anal play. See nerve endings above. And eight, the idea of saying it is disgusting could not be more sex negative. Most people are not engaging in the anal region if they're not feeling well internally. Come on, I am sure there are far worse things you have done in your life. I could go on for days listing bullet points about anal sex, but I want to try this time to talk more about the sadness I feel when I hear people being too afraid to try it. It makes me frustrated, to be honest. You see, I have this rule of thumb that I live by. Try anything three times. The first time you try something, maybe you weren't in the right headspace. The second time, maybe it was the person you were with. But if you try it a third time and you do not enjoy it, you have successfully learned that you are not into it. Now, some of you may say that you do not have to try something to know that you won't be into it. I 100% agree with that. I don't have to have sex with a vulva to know that is not something I want to try. More on that in another post. But I don't want fear, disgust, homophobia, and pain to be associated with anal sex in this world. This is something everyone should have the option to enjoy without societal judgment. Part of our sexual development is putting ourselves in positions to be open and grow into who we are. This can be uncomfortable, but does not have to be a deterrent. As I sit here, my mind goes in many directions with where to take this post. What I keep coming back to is this question. What can I say to help people fight through the stigma associated with anal play? So, my dear patrons, what follows is my advice. If you are fearful or put off by the idea of anal play, let me first say that I understand it and fully support anything you choose to do or not do with your body. With that being said, if the reasons behind these emotions are due to shame, purity culture, sex negativity, or ignorance, then I would encourage you to explore and learn more before passing judgment. Let's talk a little bit about fantasy play and the association with anal sex. Justin Lay Miller, author of Tell Me What You Want, has dedicated his life to researching people's fantasies. Let's look at the top five fantasies when taking into account all genders and sexual orientations. One, multi-partner sex. Think threesomes, orgies, gangbangs. Two, BDSM. Three, novelty, adventure, and variety. Four, taboo sex acts. And five, passion, romance, and intimacy. Outside of multi-partner sex, anal play could fit into each of those other fantasy categories. Vulva owners report that anal sex can be taboo and feel more intimate compared to vaginal intercourse. Penis owners, mostly heterosexual ones, as same-sex relationships frequently do not have an issue with anal sex, as it is a part of the sexual script for most queer men, enjoy the novelty, intimacy, and taboo experience as well. So as you can see, the research is out there. We just have to fight through the shame we may be carrying with it. At the end of the day, anal sex falls into more of the societally acceptable kinks that exist. More and more individuals are wanting to explore this act, and it is starting to be seen in heterosexual relationships is not just an act for the man. But shame will always exist around a topic if we do not expose ourselves to it. Hopefully this narrative has helped in some way. Just remember, we are all kinky motherfuckers, and choosing to engage your sexuality in new ways will always be encouraged by this guy.